Okay, so we're here with Steve Dixon. He's the president of BMX WA here in uh, Western Australia. How long have you been at the helm of the sport over here? Um, about six years, Blake. Six years. And in that time, have you seen the sport progress? Enormous changes in the six years. We've gone from being a bunch of kids riding around dirt on the, the odd council block to facilities like you know Westside Bunbury, uh, Kalgoorlie will come online soon. You know, big, big professional uh, run clubs, big gates, big jumps. Um, and it's no longer good enough to just rock up on Sunday and expect you're going to win. You're not going to do it. Yep. You know, a lot. You've got to put a lot into it. You'll only now get out what you what you put in. Um, and I think we're only just now starting to realise um, the depth of the training that we need. And do you think uh, the public in general, general public, are starting to learn more about the sport and take it, the sport itself, more seriously as against viewing it as a kid's sport? I think. Uh, Certainly, can, local uh, government official, government uh, organisations, uh, and state government see it now more as a professional sport. They see the infrastructure that we're building. Uh, they see that we have good programs and policies in place, and so they, yes, they see it not just building a few trails or a, or a skate park. They see it as as a more serious contender as a sport. Uh, the sport of cycling, of course, being really, really large. Uh, this is just another dimension to the sport of cycling, and it's a dimension they've never seen before. But it will only get better and better and better as time goes on. From the top, tell us about the introduction of transponders and why they've been introduced to the sport over here. Okay, from the top, um, we introduced them for the 2011-12 Super Series. Um, we had them, managed to get them at the first event, which was Coben. Um, the main reason for introduction was the technology was invaluable as a training tool uh, and it also gave us a huge relief in the number of, of uh, volunteers that we needed to run Super Series. Um, basically, um, you're no longer relying on human error to point somebody incorrectly. Uh, you know, what, you do, what you're doing is, uh, and I say incorrectly, um, because that's what, that's what the end result is. People believe they've been pointed incorrectly. Uh, they don't believe the pointers, uh, we're, who we 99% of the time work in actual fact correct. But unless, they are, unless you're on the line, looking straight across the line, you don't get a, a, an accurate view. Now parents can see it's the transponder. The transponder records, the transponder records to a thousandth or less of a second. Um, there is a chances of there being a mistake are very, very, very few. And in the results now, um, I've seen the Caratha results especially, you're posting up the lap times from every single lap of the race, so could you argue then that they're, they're really good for training and comparing your lap times throughout the day and that sort of stuff? Well, I'll give you a classic example, Blake. Uh, last year we went to Bunbury for Shambhai Pro Bike. Uh, did you ride there? I think you did. No, no you didn't. Sorry, you had a broken coal mine. But the guys that rode there, no, that's right, you were busted. Uh, guys that rode there, um, they'll go around and they'll think, uh, Timmy Moores, Tim think, goes to Bunbury to train this year and thinks, yeah, I'm going really, really well. We put a transponder on Timmy's bike, we send him around the track and he suddenly sees he's five seconds slower than Medill, or five seconds slower than Kirkham or Josh Callan or one of those guys. It's accurate information. Yep. It's no longer a, gee, I think I'm going well, it's now black and white. They'll know exactly how hard they're going because we'll have time to compare them. Okay, um, cost has been the significant keyword here over the last couple of months and the outlay to buy the unit and that sort of stuff. Can you tell us about why the unit costs so much? Um, how can you, can you, for the for people watching it, can you justify the price um, of the unit? With the technology, it's probably hard to justify the price in one year. Well, not so much, not so much the actual number, but how you reach the, the, the number that it costs. The 135? Yeah. Okay, the 135 was a deal that we did uh, with my laps for buying quantity because we bought purchased more than 300 transponders they gave us a deal at $135 instead of $150 we passed that $135 saving or the saving of the, the and the cost of $135 onto anybody that wants to buy their own transponders okay it's obviously cheaper than buying uh, than hiring because if you hire them over this over the course of the year at $10 a super series 
10 rounds, you've spent $100. You might as well, you know, the transponder has an expected life of up to five years, yep. a guaranteed life of two years. So what you're saying is that your hiring costs at each event go towards paying off a transponder unit when you do decide to purchase one? If you decide to purchase a transponder, you'll get half of your hire fees back. So if you've hired a transponder four times, you've spent $40, you'll get $20 discount from the 135 for the transponder. Okay, no so you'll get 100 you'll pay 115 for your transponder. All right. And uh, how much money is the association making off of this entire transponder project? We made nothing. It's a at total all? total loss. Okay, what we've done is we've had an investment in technology. Uh, when we if we, if and when we get all the transponders sold, we'll have made an investment of around $28,000 in hardware. That that investment will stay with us for as long as we have the timing system. So when you depreciate it over time, it's a very small investment for a very big return. So what you're saying is, well, so what you're saying, not so much what you're saying, but the people who think that you're just in it to make money out of the out of the whole system is completely false? We make no money out of it. We, it costs us money to have them, Blake. No worries. Uh, well, thanks very much for that. We appreciate it. Um, I know a few guys had a bit of concerns about the time frame as to how late they were introduced. Was it just a, a, a fairly long winded process getting them organised and that sort of thing? Well, the process, first of all, was we had to come up with $70,000 to pay for them. So we had to ensure that the $70,000 was available, which is the cost of the transponders, obviously, and all the hardware. Yep. Okay. So we chose, and, and behind that, we also chose to buy our transponders rather than rent them from MyLabs because the long term savings were somewhere in the over five years, were somewhere in the order of $60,000. So that was a saving to us as an association. All right. The other thing was supply, we couldn't get them. Okay, my laps were short of supply, um, and w when we thought we had it all sewn up and done, then we got told we could, some of the equipment wasn't available. But we still, whilst it was tight, we managed to get it in for the first round, which was Coburn. Um, we took them to Caratha, where they worked fantastically at Caratha. We ironed a few problems out uh, that we had at Caratha. And next round, Southern Districts, I'm pretty certain you'll find that'll be really nice, smooth. Uh, registration will go much easier. Uh, people will understand better what's needed of the transponder. Um, and just to say from Coburn, uh, you know, and a, a lot of thanks obviously goes to the people that did hire them. We had two transponders out of that whole lot that were hired that weren't returned. Okay, they were subsequently returned, but people just forgot. So to get all those, all but two transponders back on the day was a great. No worries. So, and is this on a national level a bit of a sort of innovation in terms of this level of transponders being introduced at a state level for a state series or? Um, not really. I mean we're, we're actually uh, one of the last states to introduce transponders but we wanted to make sure that all the other states had it right. We wanted to make sure we got the extra equipment we needed. We purchased extra decoders, we purchased extra laptops if we were needed to make so we had contingency for if there was a failure. Uh, other states at some stages hadn't done that and so they, they didn't have the contingency and they had to purchase later. Uh, so we bought it all at the, uh, in one go. We made sure we made a very astute purchase uh, because obviously it's the association's money but it's, it's a step in the right direction for the future of the sport because it's a training tool particularly and, and look it's a training tool for our coaches who have, uh, our state coach will be able to take the transponders to a track, set it up and use it for timing but what it also does by issuing the time results is a bonus for every rider out there because the, the guy who's an eight year old uh, goes out and, and wants to know why he's not winning he can look straight at his times and see how slow how much slower he is than the guy that's winning also the other thing is look at some of the times you know you've got uh, i was looking at the, the uh, times for uh, Caratha, and you've got uh, young rochelle smith she's right up there with the with the best elite girl you know she's only a couple of seconds off the pace in pro open women that that shows that'll push the older riders along as well because i see the younger guys are getting close to their times no worries. And just to conclude, um, for everyone watching, it, you know, just just watching, it, interested. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the whole introduction of the system and, and transponders in general? Or I just think that it's a, as I say, like it's a great initiative. I think it's uh, and it's something we've needed for a while. We've not been a, we've lacked in Western Australia with uh, resources for some time. Uh, we're now in a position where we have those resources available. We've got the funds to support getting the resource and we might we should be using those funds to better improve the sport and drive it forward in Western Australia. Our goal is Olympic champions. That's our goal. National plates Olympic champions. No worries, well thanks very much for your time Steve. No I really appreciate it. Thank you.